I greet everyone in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm going to pick up from where I left off from Philippians chapter 2 and I'd like to read these scripture verses in this time of my life and pause. In the Bible there's a word sela. Sela means to pause and think for a while. And there are these words that we read, it needs to have a transformative effect in our life. Most of us read it as if we're reading a novel. That's not how you read the Bible. Even if you read one chapter, try to find out what that chapter is trying to say and how does that apply to me and can I make these changes to become more like my Lord. Christian life is about transformation. If you are not growing, we need to set aside some time and say, Lord, I've listened to what she has said right now and I want you to change me where I can become more like you. Not become more like anyone else that you may admire in the Christian realm, but rather become more like you. It says here in Philippians 2, 12, and I'm going to pick up. It says, continue to work out your salvation. Your salvation. It's not someone else's salvation. It's my salvation. It is done. And if you read verse 13, it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. But work out your salvation. God is going to help you with that. We don't have to, I don't know what it is, like when you go to the gym, you have to work it out and keep your muscles strong. Yes, there are certain things that you have to work out in your spiritual walk, but the act or your willful desire to have this change is orchestrated and achieved by the Holy Spirit. It is God, not you, who's going to help you do this in order to will and to act in, to, in order to fulfill his good purpose. Not our purpose, but his purpose. In Zechariah 4, 6, it says, It is not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So we are created beings. The creator knows how to better ourselves because he sees the end and he also sees the beginning of our life. He wants you to have the best life. He wants you to have a life abundantly. But a lot of us are stuck because of the fact that we don't want to change. There is a uh, story that goes like this. There was a, a doctor. There was a young man working in his office and he became very sick. And the young man was at the mercy of the doctor. And the, do and the doctor saved his life. He became very sick and the doctor saved his life. And the young man came and asked him, how long do you want me to help you for what you have done for me? And this young man was poor and he didn't, he was like more of an indebted service that he was doing to the, for the doctor because the doctor had saved his life. And the doctor replied, the rest of your life because that's how long you would have been dead if I had not saved you. Let's reflect that for a while. Jesus paid a debt that we did not, we could not afford to pay. We could not pay it. It was the debt of sin and its effect on our life. He came and gave us life through his shed blood on the cross of Calvary. So how much of our life do we owe in service to him the rest of our life? Think about it, the rest of our life. And how should we live this rest of our life? Jesus wants you to become like him. And we're trading our old life to the new one. It is one without regret. What we experience when we give up this old life of sin, we have peace that comprehends, that surpasseth all understanding. We have love unconditional by our Lord and common, uncommon grace to overcome all the difficulties of life. So let's go back to the word, work out your salvation. We're not working towards acquiring salvation because it's already done. We're not working at it because it's already done. 
we're not working up towards it because it's already done. Christianity is the only religion that says, come as you are. Come as you are. And as you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, he will do the necessary changes because it's his good will and purpose to act in our life. We don't need to do anything for salvation. God has done his part. We're justified. We've talked about it. Sanctification is a process. And that is where this working out is. What we're doing is we're mortifying or crucifying the deeds of the flesh. It's all at war against the sin nature. And the, we need to be intolerant to sin. A lot of us in our Christian walk, we walk, a lot on, we walk alongside of sin and and ignore it or we say oh it doesn't affect us in any way sin has its repercussions and sometimes we continue to tolerate it and it will over overtake us there is a thing called indwelling sin it is like trick candles you ever blown out a trick candle on a birthday cake what it does is you blow it out and then it comes back again. That's the indwelling sin. This is where we work out our salvation. Apostle Paul in Romans 7, 21 to 22, it reads like this. So I find this law at work. Although I want to do good, evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in me waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner to the law of sin at work within me. So this is the indwelling sin. And then he goes on to say, O wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body that is subject to death? Here's the answer. Thanks be to God who delivers me through Jesus Christ our Lord. There is that indwelling sin. What are we going to do with it? Let me go ahead and give you an example. One of the indwelling sins could be a habitual habit of lying. The Holy Spirit tells you not to do it. And then you are tempted to do it. And you struggle within. And then you ask yourself, what does the word of God say? It says you shall not lie. You shall not lie. The answer in the Bible is either it's black or white. It's yes or no. The gray areas are what's causing us to struggle in our life. It says, you shall not lie. Obey the word and leave the consequences to the Lord. Obey the word. And it says, immediately God will back you up. And likewise for all indwelling sin that easily besets us. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold, all things are new, all of the old has passed away. At our conversion, you are given a faith to believe, peace for all circumstances, love to unlovable, uh, love the unlovable, joy beyond comprehension. But however, these graces are not self-perpetuating. That means you have to keep adding on to it. You have to feed it like you feed your physical man. And it says, peace, um, read the word of God with an appetite. That is what I fully believe where Christians lack. We read it for the sake of reading it, but read it like you're very hungry to receive something from it. Listen intently, meditate on the word, apply. Application is so key. Application is so key. And I pray that we start to really be transformed. Stop being a babe in Christ. Go on to the spiritual maturity that God wants you to. And so you can all partner with him to do what he is expecting for, from you. When you do it, you become a follower of Christ. When you keep doing what the Lord asks you to do. And if you don't do it, you become a follower of religion, a follower of religion, not in a relationship with God that transforms. What we need to do is we need to feed our faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We need to read everything about hope, everything about hope in the word of God. Hope is there for us because we have a Christ we have a Lord Jesus Christ who conquered everything for us. 
and then you need to feed love. It says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, it's such a beautiful chapter. It's called the love chapter. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not boast. It does not envy. Now, I'm going to ask you to do something. Substitute your name for the word love. Are you patient? Are you kind? Are you boastful? Do you envy? These are the things we need to ask ourselves. It's time to do a self-reflection on who we are and what is it that we are trying to achieve. It says work out your salvation. God has given you everything. A lot of it is dependent on your obedience and application. And put ourselves in the place of service where our love for people is tested and we have a chance to grow. You can't live a sheltered life. You cannot live an isolated life. You have to go out there and where you are challenged in these areas and so that you can grow. We need to feed humility. I had defined humility like this, acknowledging and obeying the one who's truly Lord. Once you do that, the character of Jesus Christ, his demeanor, his posture, everything will become ours. And I pray that you understand what it means to work out our salvation. And we last week we talked in fear and trembling. But I had to go back on this, this verse because it says, work out your salvation. Work out your salvation. And that includes myself and yourself. I pray that the Lord will continue to stretch you and you become like him every day. God loves you the way you are, but he refuses to leave you that way because he wants you to be just like Jesus. Have a blessed, blessed week ahead.